The Razer Mamba is a sub $50 wireless mouse that features RGB lighting, up to 50 hours of battery life, and a 16,000 DPI optical sensor. The question is, is this mouse worth buying? We'll be looking to answer that today. The first thing that probably sticks out to you about the Mamba is its RGB lighting. Like any Razer product, the Mamba integrates seamlessly with Synapse and allows you to control its lighting effects, change bindings to your preferences, and even sync its lighting with your other Razer products. Let me do a quick demonstration of the various lighting effects. Alright, so we're in Synapse right now. I thought I would just go through all of the presets pretty quickly. The first of which is called Ambient Awareness. This is a little bit of a weird one, but essentially it just syncs with whatever is on your screen. So if you go to a really bright page, it gets brighter. Uh, if I were to just open Twitter really quickly, you can see that it turns a little bit blue. So it's obviously dependent on whatever you're looking at. The next effect is called audio meter, which I've just enabled. But as you can tell, the mouse has no lights until you start playing some sort of audio. The next effect is called breathing which is another one of your standard RGB sort of effects. It just turns off and turns on, and it fades in and fades out. The next effect is called fire, which essentially just makes the light underneath the scroll wheel turn red and the logo flash orange. The next effect is called reactive, and I'll need to touch the mouse for this one, but essentially, whenever you click, the mouse lights up. The next effect is called ripple, which functions pretty similarly to reactive, although it scrolls. Then we have spectrum cycling, which is another one of your standard RGB effects. It just scrolls through all of the colors in the RGB spectrum. Then the next one is a little bit of an oddball. It is called starlight, and essentially it just kind of flashes random colors like this. Then a little bit more on the boring side, and also more subtle, we have static, which means you can just pick any color that you want. Second to last, we have wheel. This one just also scrolls through all of the colors, but it kind of does it in a circular way, so the scroll wheel and the razor logo are kind of changing out of sync. And then lastly, here's Wave. It does something pretty similar. Keep in mind, the software allows you to layer these and control the speed. And in cases of static, you can change the color. So there's a lot of configuration, but that does it for the presets. Anyways, Synapse is not perfect by any means, but I just can't complain about its integration with this mouse. It just works, even when it's connected wirelessly via the included dongle. Speaking of which, another key feature of the Mamba is that you can use it both wired and wirelessly via the included micro USB to type A cable and wireless dongle. While the two meter cable is braided and high quality, it's worth noting that it is proprietary, despite having standard connectors on both ends. The problem is that Razer has designed the micro USB end to slide into the mouse, which admittedly does look quite seamless when you are using it in wired mode, but in turn prevents you from using any old micro USB cable you have lying around the house. However, as I've implied, this isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as the cable is still working. I just love how it looks when it's plugged in, you wouldn't even know that it had wireless functionality unless you looked really close. The problem with all this, however, is that Razer themselves does not sell replacement cables, so when your cable does end up breaking, you'll have to buy something from a third party. Another note on the cable, there is also a female micro USB to USB type A adapter included in the box, which allows you to use the cord as a USB extension cable when the mouse is not plugged in. Now, a lot of people might take this and throw it aside and then never touch it again, but personally, I make use of it a lot because my phone is constantly dying when I'm sitting at my desk, so I can simply just switch between charging my mouse or plugging my phone into the adapter. Moving on to the left and right click buttons, they are clicky mechanical switches that are rated for up to 50 million presses. Other than that, there's not too much to say. They feel nice and they get the job done. In terms of the mouse's sensor, it has a 5G optical sensor, which has been extremely reliable and I have never had any problems with it thus far. As for battery life, the Mamba lasts around 50 hours when the lights are disabled. Realistically, however, you're probably not going to be turning off the lights, in which case it only lasts around six or seven hours. This is definitely not great, and while I can't find the official milliamp hour capacity of the lithium ion battery inside of this mouse online anywhere, it's probably because it's not too impressive. 
That being said, I've never found the Mamba's short battery life to be intrusive at all. Whenever it starts to die, you just plug it in. Personally, I just leave it charging at my desk when I'm not using my computer, and when I'm going to places to study or get work done like the library or Starbucks, I can just throw it in a bag and I never have brought the cable with me, and it has never died on me. In terms of extra buttons, the Mamba has two programmable buttons on its side, as well as two buttons below the scroll wheel that control the mouse's DPI. Keep in mind, every button on the mouse can be reprogrammed via Synapse, but the side buttons are especially helpful during games. For example, when I play Counter-Strike, I bind the top button for knifing and the bottom button for voice chat since these are extremely common actions in the game. One last thing I want to mention before we move on to ergonomics is to clear up a little bit of confusion about the wireless mode of the Mamba. You can totally use it as a wired mouse. When you plug it in using the micro USB to type A cable, it will automatically begin to transmit data and charge over the cord. So if you're worried about latency, don't be, for two reasons. One, the latency is completely imperceptible. Again, I could not find an official figure online to describe its input lag, but I have been playing games that require fast reactions, such as Counter-Strike, for many years, and I can confidently tell you that there is no perceptible input lag. And two, even if you were worried about the latency after getting the mouse, it is no issue. You can plug it in like I said. Ergonomics is something that the Mamba excels at in my opinion. Obviously, everyone has different hands, so it's pretty difficult from a design perspective to create a mouse that is suitable for everyone. However, I feel that Razer took extra steps to make sure that the Mamba was comfortable for long sessions. First of all, it only weighs 105 grams, which I believe is a healthy middle ground in terms of weight. Its weight is not adjustable, but for 50 bucks, I can understand them leaving out that feature. Another thing that makes the Mamba special in terms of its ergonomics are the ribbed rubber pads that are on the left and right side of the device. These pads allow you to grip the mouse very comfortably, which is especially helpful if you are the type of person that lifts up your mouse a lot when you're playing games. On that note, I should mention that the Mamba is on the larger side in terms of mice, so if you don't have very big hands, it might not be the mouse for you. If you're in the market for an affordable mouse that's great for gaming but also can be used casually for productivity, I think that the Mamba is a great option. Its battery life may be subpar, but Razer's high quality for its accessory line is definitely present in the Mamba, and I've been enjoying using it at my first year of college so far. I use it daily for getting schoolwork done, and in my spare time, some light gaming. That being said, I have bought this mouse with my own money, twice actually, but that's a story for another day and I could wholeheartedly recommend it to you. We have an affiliate link down in the description, so if you are interested in purchasing this mouse and supporting us, be sure to use that. Anyways, that's it for this video though, so if you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.